is Will Barton of the Denver Nuggets, and my mind is on sports. Wilson Tarpe Jr. here from my mind on sports, joined by our guy Mike Sykes. Our Wizards, uh, are we going to say insider or not? What are we going to do? I mean, I'm not inside. I'm, I'm here, but... I mean, we're at media day. That's yeah, close yeah, enough. Sure, so we, can, we can go with we, that. We can go with that. All <laughs> right, so we had a blast. Last time we were at media day, it was a couple years ago. Totally different roster yeah. from a few years ago. Your initial thoughts on talking to everybody today, and, and even just with Brooks, it feels it just feels brand new here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like a breath of fresh air around here, to be honest. Everybody's talking about the new additions, the, the new style of play that they're going to be playing. Um, everybody's talking about how they're a defensive first team again, and it, it, that seems like a positive thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there, it, it seems like there's a lot of positivity. Nobody's really the, – the word that you didn't hear a lot of is, is playoffs. Like, obviously, people want to win, but nobody knows if, if this team is good enough to make the playoffs after last season. So, I mean, it, it, it seemed like there were, were tempered expectations here, but at the same time, there was a lot of um, – positive vibes from a lot of the, really everybody on the roster. As you said, it was mostly positive. People didn't really talk too much about last year in terms of firing any shots, but there were kind of trigger words, a few trigger words that were used today in reference to last year. One of them was roles. Yeah. We've heard that several times by almost everybody about people understanding their roles and, and having a role. So it kind of brings into question last year, how do people not know their roles? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's just a <laughs> For lack of a better word, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a coaching problem, to be honest with you. And, and when Martin Gortat was over here addressing the media, someone asked him, you know, what, what is the difference, the biggest difference between this coaching staff this year and, and last coaching staff? And he just, point blank, was like, I don't really want to talk about it like that. It was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, like he was just like, oh, man, you know, it, so <laughs> many things, but I'm not really trying to talk about them. I don't want to put anybody on blast. So, like, obviously – there were some issues with the coaching last season, and a lot of players felt that, and a lot of players are happy um, that there's someone new here. Whether, you know, the, the new guy, whether he does, Scott Brooks, whether he does his job well or not remains to be seen, but you can tell that there were a lot of people who were re ready for change. Around here. All right, we heard this a couple years ago, Washington had one of the best backcourts in the league. Where Bradley mentioned earlier, well, John, to get back into that conversation, they would like to this year. Can they do it on a defensive end? Like, that's the thing that I think a lot of us have wondered. Um, and now with Scott Brooks, it's something we're going to get a chance to see them flat out, you know, get after people with their size and athletic ability. Do you think they have, do you think they have the ability to, like, really wreak havoc as a tandem defensively? Uh, I'm not sure, to be quite honest with you. I, I know, I mean, we've seen it from John Wall. We've mm -hmm. seen him be a, a very, very good to elite defender in the league at his position. And last season, he took a step back. He took a large step back. And I think a lot of that was because of the role that he had to play offensively and mm -hmm. the, the style of play they had. And, and plus, the I mean, there was so many things wrong with the, the defensive <laughs> scheme that they were using. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that Wall can get there, whether Bill can or not is, is another thing because, you know, he's guarding people like Clay Thompson, James Harden, Jimmy Butler, guys like that on night in and night out. I mean, the point guard position is tough, but – Really, when you talk about the two-guard position, a lot of times you are left on an island with those right. dudes. Nine times out of ten with a point guard, you're going to have some type of help. So with, with Brad, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a tougher challenge playing on the wing and being an elite defender as opposed to, you know, Wall, who's just guarding primarily on ball. Like Brad has, has to compartmentalize, okay, now we're on ball, now we're off ball. Now I'm running through screens and all right. this stuff. So, I mean, I've seen him be a good defender before. We've all seen that, but... Whether he can do it throughout 82 games remains to be seen. And he has to stay healthy also. So. All right. Health is a big thing for everybody on this roster. Um, no timetable yet for John's return. We heard with Tomas Sadoransky, and we also have Trey Burke in terms of guys that might fill in for John as he kind of eases his way back into things. You and I were just talking before we turned the light on. Everyone's raving about Tomas. Like, like they're going out of their way to say it. No one's prompting them to talk about it. People ask several times, who stood out? Who comes to mind? Who stood out? It's been resoundingly Tomas. Yeah, and, and, you know, maybe some of that is because, you know, they haven't seen him play basketball before. I mean, he was playing in Europe over at, uh, I believe it was FC Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, you know, there wasn't a lot on him, I guess. And, and so maybe some of it is, oh, we're seeing this guy, and he's actually really good, and he right. can play multiple positions now. And I, I didn't know that he was going to be this good. But maybe some of it is, like, you know, he's this good, and, and he can play 
a really pivotal role in, in how good this team is going to be. But it, it, either way, it's encouraging to see that, you know, we, he's holding his own weight, in, um, even if they're just pickup games, but he's holding his own weight against other professional NBA players who have been in the league for a really long time. There are no rookies on this team. So, Well, he is the rookie on this team, really, so. I think one of the other positives with, before we leave Tomas, the subject of Tomas, is that he gets a great on-the-job teacher in John Wall if you're going to learn how to play the point guard position in the yeah. league. Yeah. We're talking easily one of the two best playmakers in the league at the position, and that's the guy you get to go to crash course with each and every day, whether John's healthy or not, you have that guy in your ear. Um, lastly, just your expectations a after going through media day. Training camp starts tomorrow, but just, just your expectations on your general feeling leaving media day. Um, I don't really feel any differently than I felt before. Uh, the same is it, it should be good. It should be improved, much improved defensively. They should be really good. Um, you know, there's a lot of versatility here. There, there's a lot of um, a lot of guys who can handle the ball, um, to be honest with you, which is something that they've lacked in years past, so something that they haven't really experimented with at all. So, I mean, my expectations, you know, I, I still think they're probably uh, – at most 45 win team but mm -hmm. who knows maybe they surprise people with their defensive play this year i don't know uh, I, I really have no clue how they turn so out so you're going to win around 45 um probably less to be honest less with you. okay yeah less than 45. somewhere between um 41 and 45 wins okay. somewhere around that that area i mean i don't know if they have improved that much from last year to this year i just know that there's a different coach and the defense should be good again with um, Yam Mahimi coming off of the bench or maybe even starting at certain points mm -hmm. in the season. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, see, with me, um, I think I'm kind of all aboard Scott Brooks' defensive train. Mm -hmm. It just I don't know what's going to happen on offensive end, but the thing I'm most intrigued by is more John Wall post-ups. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see how this plays out on the court because, as you said, we've seen him. He's had to carry the load as a primary ball handler so much. Teams are able to load up on him so much, and we've seen guards with less ability – who are able to post up and the trouble they've caused. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, getting him off of the ball and, and having him position himself on, you know, smaller guards, because he, he is a bigger guard, like you alluded to earlier, um, that, that could be really beneficial to the Wizards' offense. Um, not necessarily for him to score out of the post, but just to find people, to have people cut around him, to design sets behind that. Kind like, I'm of, thinking, like, old-school Mark Jackson out the post, get him in yeah, the post, yeah, and just facilitate you know, from there. Yeah, you know, Mark Jackson, Sam Cassell. Now you have dudes like um, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, who are doing it and doing it really effectively. And I, I think Chris Paul is probably the best example for Wall because um, he, he never really uses the post game to, to kind of score. He always uses it to, to initiate different parts of their offense. Like, they'll go into a um, you know a, a free-throw line pick-and-roll with Blake Griffin, and that's a super short roll that – most bigs really don't know what to do with the dude like Blake Griffin. Like, the Wizards don't have a, a Blake Griffin or anything like that, but, you know, maybe you can find some way to make that useful, a useful part of your offense. While they don't have Blake, they do have Keith, and I'm not talking about in terms of rolling to the basket, but as a spot-up shooter with John in the post, that should be fun yeah. for them. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that'll they, – they're a good combo, I think. They'll be a good combo. Um, you know, whether he has his, um, his spot-up shooting, whether he's improved in that – it remains to be seen because, I, I mean, last year that was a, a real struggle for him. Everybody always talks about how he missed um, his first 11 three-point attempts. He said he spent most of the summer working with his brother on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I asked him what he was working on, mm -hmm. three-point shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that's good. That's good. That's a great sign. Um, and, you know, if, if he can go back to where he was in Phoenix where, you know, he was a um, – one of the premier pick and pop guys, yes. and as not even only as a shooter, but as a playmaker. Yeah, you know that 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 would be huge for Washington. All right, so that's pretty much it for media day. It's Mike Sykes and I. I'm gonna ignore that. <laughs> it will give you more updates this week at training camp.